So it's been a few days since I last picked up the camera. I haven't filmed recently because it's been pretty dull. I've been going to university lectures and um, choosing my modules and things like that, so there's not really much to show you. But today I'm going to the Musée Rodin. Rodin was a famous French sculptor and artist, and I'm really excited to go and have a look at the museum with all of his work. And of course, I'll be sharing that with you. So let's go. So this is my outfit of the day. And it's the first time that I've worn jeans this year since late spring, early summer. I've been wearing skirts and dresses every day or shorts. So it feels really uncomfortable to be wearing jeans again because I just don't like to wear jeans. I like my legs to <laughs> be a bit more free. But yeah, these are Hollister jeans and I really love the fit of these because they're just really comfortable and flattering. Hollister is really good jeans. Um, so yeah, that's my outfit. And I'm not happy to be wearing jeans again. <laughs> Fashion week at the moment, so as you can see here, they had the Dior show yesterday. They're already taking down the, the structure that was used for the catwalk. Yeah. I wish they did things for the actual public for fashion week, because they only have the catwalks, which obviously invite only. Um, but I wish they had events for other people as well because I didn't even realise it was going on until I passed now and see that they're taking down the, the structure for the Dior catwalk and then I remember that it's fashion week but yeah, it's a shame they don't do anything because it would be cool to be able to, I don't know, have some events or something going on for normal people. <laughs> Getting closer, I'm walking through the Parc des Invalides and it's just to the left of the museum. Rodin is a museum in Paris's 7th arrondissement that was opened in 1919 and is primarily dedicated to the sculptures of the French artist Auguste Rodin. The museum is set within the Hôtel Biron, which Rodin used as his workshop from 1908. At the end of his life, Rodin donated his entire collection of sculptures, as well as some paintings by Van Gogh, Monet and Renoir, to the French state on the condition that they turn the building into a museum dedicated to his works, which I find highly amusing, but his tactics appear to have worked since the museum is open to this day. Rodin is today considered to be the founder of modern sculpture. Despite his traditional education and the craftsman-like approach he took to his work, he proved himself capable of breaking away from predominant figurative sculpture traditions, which were mainly decorative, to produce revolutionary naturalist sculptures. Through his work, he aimed to explore character and emotion. Unlike his peers who imitated the monumental expression and idealism of the Greek style, Rodin searched to celebrate individual character and physicality through detailed textured surfaces and the interplay of light and shadow. He wanted to emphasise the concreteness and imperfection of flesh, and he believed that one's physical features were what revealed their character. One of his most famous works, The Thinker, or Le Penseur, perfectly illustrates his aesthetic. Rodin himself said, What makes my thinker think is that he thinks not only with his brain, with his knitted brow, his distended nostrils and compressed lips, but with every muscle of his arms, back and legs, with his clenched fist and gripping toes. Instead of copying traditional academic postures, Rodin preferred his models to move naturally around his studio. In terms of materiality, the sculptor first made many iterations of his ideas as quick sketches in clay that were later fine-tuned, cast in plaster, and cast in bronze or carved from marble. However, Rodin's focus was on the handling of clay. In general, his approach was highly criticised at the time, which Rodin was very sensitive to, but thankfully he refused to change his style, and eventually even gained increasing approval from both the government and the artistic community. I was walking around the gardens in the museum and it's raining so I'm taking shelter here until it passes. I'm hoping it'll pass in a minute because on the weather app it says it's not going to last long. But 
This is where I'm hanging out at the moment. Just like that, it stopped. The sky is, oh, it doesn't even spare, it's blue again. It literally just was chucking it down. Suddenly, within a matter of seconds, it was raining and now it's sunny again. Extreme weather for you. See how lovely and sunny it is again? So now I can carry on walking around the gardens and enjoy the rest of my visit. I'm lucky that the rain literally lasted like one or two minutes, it wasn't long, so I just took shelter. Now I can carry on and it's really beautiful. So this is the back of the house and then here are the lovely gardens. So I'm really looking forward to having a little wander around. through the woody bit. It really feels like autumn. I'm just surrounded by orange leaves and conkers. I really love this sound. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but just the sound of leaves in the breeze rustling. It's literally so calming. I love walking here because for a moment you feel like you feel like you've escaped the city and it's really, really lovely and peaceful. museum and I really really loved it it was so cool to see all of his work in person because obviously I've seen it online I've heard about it but to see it in person is a completely different experience as it is with all art really and um, which is why I love going to art galleries so much and um, the house used to be his so it didn't only have his own work but work that he collected so he was really interested in ancient um, ancient classical sculptures as well so he collected Greek, Roman, Egyptian sculptures and it was really cool to see the link between his work and the inspiration he drew from his own collections, his personal collections and as well they had um, a temporary exhibition comparing his work with Picasso's because they even though their work looks completely different upon first inspection, when you take a closer look and pick apart what they were trying to achieve and the influences and everything there's actually loads of similarities so they would it was really clever the way they set up the exhibition because as you went along there'd be one piece by Rodin and then one piece by Picasso and you would see the link between them and it was really well done so I enjoyed that and yeah as you saw I got stuck in the rain. <laughs> Luckily I was right next to um, a little cantilevering roof that I could hide under just as it started raining and it only lasted like two minutes so it was fine I just waited there and then went back out into the gardens but yeah <laughs> the weather's 
definitely feeling more autumnal. It's a lot colder all of a sudden. And yeah, the rain is coming and it's just, I know the summer's over and it makes me very sad, but at least I'm still able to go out and see things um, before I properly start my course. So yeah, now I'm making um, lunch slash dinner because it's already half three and I'm very, very hungry because I haven't eaten break. Well, I haven't eaten since seven when I had my breakfast, so I'm starving. And I've got in the oven, I'm roasting some mushrooms and fennel. And then I have a boiled egg with mayo and some cheese and salami as well. So that's going to be my lunch. And I just can't wait for it to be finished. I'm literally just hovering by the oven, checking it every five minutes because I'm like, oh, I want to eat, but I have to be patient. Okay, so I've just served it up. I've got my boiled egg with mayo, some baguette and some veggies. And I did have some cheese and salami, but I've already eaten that. I was snacking while I was waiting because I was really hungry. But this is my dinner and I'm about to eat it and I'm really excited. <laughs> Yum. I can't wait. And this is my view today. Blue skies, love it. So I've just finished my lunch and now I'm going to have a coffee and some dessert. So you probably saw in the footage that on the way back I stopped at a bakery called Midore. It's one that I've been meaning to try out for a while but I haven't been to yet. And I was walking past and I saw these in the window and I couldn't resist. <laughs> so I ended up picking up two slices of tarts. This one is a fig and nut and honey tart. And this one is a summer fruit crumble tart. And what I'll probably do is cut them each in half and have half of each. But I just couldn't decide on which one to get because they both looked so good. So I got a slice of each. And like I said, half of each of them. And that will be my dessert with my coffee. I have my beautiful um, antique plate that I picked up at a antiques fair. And that's what I'm going to put them on. So let's hope that they don't fall apart. This is awkward to do with one hand. Oh no, okay. <laughs> So I think that's the best that I'm going to get them. So now I'm going to go sit by my balcony. I already have my... I already have my coffee in my lovely cup and saucer. Here it is. There you go, that lighting is better. My dessert, a little selection. And now I'll be trying them and letting you know how I rate them. So let's have a sip of coffee to cleanse the palate. Mm. This one is an espresso, I don't know what it's called, it's the purple capsule. Really good. My favourite if it's not one of the sweet varieties. So first I'll try the fig and nut tart. piece of fig as well. This is like the ultimate autumnal tart. A mix of the figs and the walnuts and the honey. It's got some other fruit. I can't remember what it is now. I think it might be pear, but it's really, really lovely. Okay, now I'll take a piece of the, the summer berry crumble tart. They're really good because they're generous with the fruit in both of them. I've got really big pieces of fruit. It's annoying when you get a tart and maybe it has like one strawberry in it or something, but these are really well made and really rich and comforting. It's not like a dainty little French pastry that you can get in some of the shops that are really overpriced. These are really rich desserts. So I'm going to be enjoying those now and turn Classic FM back on <laughs> because I love to have Classic FM on in the background if I'm doing the dishes or cleaning or working or cooking, eating, I just always have it on to be honest. So I'll put that back on now and I'll enjoy my dessert. So I've just finished practicing my violin and I'll probably do a bit of journaling now and um, tonight I'll probably carry on watching The Crown um, because I started watching it ages ago and I got to season three but I never got around to watching season four and I've started watching it again so i've watched the first few episodes and i'm probably going to carry on with that today because yeah i love the crown um it now that i'm in paris it kind of reminds me of home a bit because it's obviously set in england and um i just love period dramas it's my favorite genre of film or tv series so it's yeah it ticks all the boxes for me i really enjoy watching it um 
so if you haven't watched the crown i recommend it it's really good so that's what i'll probably do tonight and um, have a bit of a cozy evening so if you enjoyed my video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to join me on more adventures around paris thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye